Hey everyone, I just got done recording the first episode of the WeV8 podcast with Eddie and Dillocker, and this is our third podcast that we're uploading together onto YouTube, but this is the first one in kind of our new series is going to be uploaded on the Semi Technologies YouTube channel. So please subscribe to Semi Technologies YouTube channel to uh, check that out. But I'm really excited about this, these ideas and this uh, Keros Bird thing. So I really wanted to share my show notes on the Henry AI Labs. Uh, YouTube channel and hopefully inspire some interest in these projects. So as a quick background, I haven't yet introduced Keros Bird onto the Henry AI Labs YouTube channel, but I've uploaded a video that presents the paper that's gonna be used in the uh, ICMLA 2021 conference on my Connor Shorten YouTube channel. And this YouTube channel is what I'm generally using for uh, like academic presentations, things like if I'm asked to do a uh, class presentation at the university. So uh, Keros Bird, the high level overview is it's a language model trained on Keros information. And particularly this project was inspired by the Keros code examples as the data set source. So I'm really excited about developing this. And, and now I'm really excited to tell you about how I'm adding this data set into Weaviate and kind of the lessons I'm learning by adding this vector search functionality for my own custom data set with this uh, particular application of things like the OpenAI uh, Copilot doing this idea of uh, language models on code data is the high-level inspiration, but now fine-tuning this into deep learning-specific code and Keros-specific code, PyTorch, Jax, thinking about this kind of thing. So I'll be presenting the full Keros Bird paper when it's published in ICMLA 2021, and this will include uh, open sourcing the model checkpoints. The, the code for training the model is pretty simple. It's just the hugging face basic how to train a language model from scratch, and the real contribution is kind of this new data set and exploring the closed tests and evaluation of the new data set of uh, seeing exactly how well these language models can remember uh, Keros information and hopefully serve as a Keros debugging tool, question answering tool, and these kind of applications. So the first thing is I've added Keros docs into Weaviate. And so Weaviate's a vector search engine, which is really exciting because you can search through these big data sets like all the Keros information you can find, and you can search for similar code snippets or high level descriptions that you type in in natural language in, in, uh, interfaces. So say you want to implement like a custom batch normalization layer. You might be trying to say, where can I find this kind of example in the Keros code examples? So you can search through the descriptions is kind of the annotation of these Keros code examples, and you can find the adaptive instance normalization uh, implementation in Keros code examples, and hopefully that can inspire the particular thing that you're looking to implement. So that's kind of the high level overview of how this semantic search interface can hopefully be useful for people looking to develop deep learning code and research projects using Keros, and then hopefully extending it to PyTorch and JAX and these kind of things in the future. So as a kind of an overview of how um, how these podcasts are structured, I have this kind of template where I'm, I'm kind of annotating the questions that I like to ask to Eddie and about these problems and the, and the uh, things that I'm doing. So I was asking Eddie and about how he thinks about symbolic schema design and annotation, how we turn this into a knowledge graph compared to just dumping the text into the data set and then just using the neural functionality only compared to the neuro symbolic functionality where we have symbolic annotation of the attributes of this kind of data that we're dumping into this uh, data set of Keros docs. So then my plan of this upon the publication is to make this data set accessible and to get it into the hugging face data sets, uh, Kaggle data sets, and hopefully indexed in papers with data when it's uh, published and having this be accessible. So I was really curious about uh, making this demo available and that's more, something that I'll get into more later on. And we're really excited about developing out the uh, demos, the, the front end web demos for using GraphQL queries on different data sets with vector search engines in, in Weaviate. So this is something that I'm really hoping and excited to be uh, bringing this to people. And so I was asking Eddie and, and, you know, some basic questions about Docker, and I hope you find this podcast useful. If you're also kind of coming from maybe more of a, uh, you know, like academic science background, and you're still learning the engineering of how to really set up these uh, data sets and what the software engineering tools are out there. So asking Eddie and some questions about how data persistence works with Docker containers, and Eddie and explained to me the difference between containers and volumes. So I was really excited to tell Eddie and about some of the roadmap ideas I have for Keros Burr, and the first of which is annotating contrastive pairs. So we have the Keros vectorizer, which is useful for this vector search engine. We want to form vector representations of code snippets and you know chunks of code within these Keros code examples, so that we can do this semantic search between you know natural language and code, or you copy in the code that you're trying to implement. Maybe you're trying to implement a custom. Uh, tf.gradients or you know the gradient tape you're trying to implement some custom kind of keras loop and you want to find a similar example in the keras code examples or some other kind of documentation as we expand the scope of uh, the data that's used here and so we want to have some kind of contrastive vectorizer and so that's a project that i'm really excited to be working on and then um so i'm, I'm going to be releasing the checkpoints and uh, having keras bert where you have the bi-directional context as well as keras gpt where you have the left to right context and releasing these model checkpoints but really what i'm more excited about is retrieve than read and this is things like retrieval augmented generation this idea of retrieving some additional context 
to read the context to answer the current inference. So say you ask a language model some knowledge intensive application about uh, Keras, like a particular thing about the, um, the, the sequential class or the particular implementation of some layer, it would help the model to go retrieve the, some kind of information. Maybe it's the API reference, maybe it's in GitHub in the source code itself, but to retrieve some kind of information that will help it to answer your new query. So I'm really excited about these retrieved and read pipelines. I've done another video on the uh, open domain question answering and the compositional generalization of that, that shows that adding this retriever component in that is best outlined in the retrieval augmented generation framework, in my opinion, is the best way of understanding this idea of retrieve and read. So Weaviate also supports a really easy integration to test these ideas with their question answering uh, module system. And in the podcast, we discussed some ideas around uh, one of these uh, demo data sets that we're releasing and how it really helps to understand the integration of retrieve and read with the Weaviate question answer question answering uh, modules interface. So this is something that I saved from the podcast because it didn't really flow with our conversation. But a question that I'd like to ask is, um, what would you like to see Keras Bert do? So uh, what I'm thinking is the next step will be to uh, get a question answering data set source from Stack Overflow. So this is open domain question answering. I think it'll really demonstrate the power of the retrieve and read. And then overall, we have more data to be working with with these Keras uh, language models. Then I think it would be really exciting these Keras code examples which is, in my opinion, the best information repository for anyone looking to do deep learning research and students and that kind of, you know, the similar kind of level that I'm at is this Keras code examples repository. So they're mostly based on implementing papers, like again, the adaptive instance normalization thing, things like supervised contrastive learning, and they're mostly can be paired with papers. So maybe we can pair this paper with the Keras code examples, and then you can kind of have this inference where you paste in a new paper and then it'll give you some kind of Keras code example implementation of the ideas in that paper. And I think that's an extremely exciting idea. So personally, this is the thing that I would like to see the most. But then I also think this is really cool. I did a paper summary review on the uh, WordCraft interface for using uh, things like GPT and BERT as a dialogue system to help you with writing. But so I think just generally kind of getting Keras BERT into a VS Code kind of interface and then doing maybe ideas like reinforcement learning and training it, fine tuning it, human in the loop learning, these kind of like buzz, these kind of ideas for structuring the learning task for fine tuning Keras BERT to really be like a useful tool for uh, writing code. Which, but I think this would be a very useful tool as well. So would question answering, but so then also another cool project I think would be machine translation. Obviously it's a super huge application and I love these things like multilingual machine translation. Not that I'm anywhere near an expert on it, but I think it's a very cool thing to see in the world. But this idea of having Keras to PyTorch, PyTorch to Keras, you, there are tons of PyTorch examples as well. So I like Keras code examples a lot. This is my preferred thing, but PyTorch also has a lot of great examples, as does Jax. So I'd really like to see this as well. So I'd really appreciate anyone who has any opinions about these different projects and wants to share some kind of comment on it. So Keras Bird is definitely the project that I'm the most excited about working on right now. But as something that we discussed in the podcast is we're really excited about multimodal vector search, comparing, say, image embeddings with text embeddings, graph embeddings with text embeddings, and then all sorts of other things that we can imagine, like audio images and all sorts of these ideas. So one other project that I think would be really cool is to be looking at uh, real estate images and text images and uh, text descriptions of these different things that you're looking at, whether it's say like a bedroom with two beds in it or a backyard with a pool in it or this kind of thing. I think it's a fun project and I think it really helps to understand the power of image text alignment and how well you can search through these super specific things in these massive image data sets that have these kind of text descriptions. So I think real estate might be a fun example of doing this. And uh, obviously e-commerce is kind of probably another big one of these image text search things, but generally thinking about, and lately there's been a lot more open source data sets of image text pairings. And maybe I'll link a couple of those in the um, description of the video that I've seen recently, but some kind of thinking about what kind of projects we can do with image text search. And then um, pushing the limits of what we can encode as vectors. This is a very rough idea and you know I don't even know if it's worth presenting, but thinking about uh, task parameters as vectors. So you could, um, and I was inspired by this by listening to Yannick Kilcher's recent interview about uh, predicting parameters from unseen architectures. So you can predict the parameters of a neural network and it's a really meta idea. It's a very crazy thing of thinking of the recursion of this kind of vector interface and Generally, the neural networks, it's like it's a recursive thing. Intelligence creates intelligence. But anyway, so this idea that you have task parameters as vectors. So I think the best example to illustrate this, and I didn't write it on the slide, but would be robots. So robots do things like they, you know, sort objects. Maybe they take the bottle cap off of a bottle 
or they say uh, juggle balls or <laughs> whatever it is that the robot's doing, you can think of the specific task parameters as vectors. And now you're vector searching through a skill set. And then, you, you know, we have things like these parameter, uh, paradigm shift of zero shot in GPT-3 uh, or frozen is where they do it with the image text alignment. But anyways, this idea is really not fully formed, but hopefully maybe it inspires someone to think about <laughs> some kind of idea of this. We're thinking about task parameters as vectors. And then what does that, what kind of vector search can you do with that? But anyway, so that idea is really not uh, very developed, but I hope that generally these advances in Keras Bird are interesting to you. And I'm really excited about releasing this Keras Bird VV8 podcast. I think we had a really great podcast and discussed a lot of interesting ideas. So if you're interested in seeing the full length podcast, it'll be uploaded sometime, uh, sometime this week of uh, the first week of December or I think probably the end of November into the first week of December. But if you want to see this podcast, it'll be on the Semi Technologies YouTube channel, which is linked in the description of this video, as well as pinned with a comment. So thank you so much for watching this preview, and I'm really excited to share these ideas about Keras Burt. I hope that you know people out there are excited about this project as well, and I really appreciate any feedback on what you think these, what kind of application you think would be exciting to see Keras Burt do. Mm -hmm.